Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're gonna be talking about five reasons that your thyroid really, 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 really needs zinc. And yes, there are a lot of reallys in there and we could even add one more because zinc is incredibly important for supporting thyroid function. This applies to pretty much everybody regardless of whatever thyroid problem you have. So if you have low thyroid function, if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, if you have hyperthyroidism, if you have no thyroid, okay, any of these things, this information is still relevant and important to you. I get a lot of questions about what, how my information applies to the various people with various types of thyroid problems. So I'm openly telling you right now, this applies to everybody and it will soon become evident why. So let me talk about that um, as we go through here. So again, these are five reasons why your thyroid and your body really need zinc. So number one, zinc deficiency inhibits something called TRH synthesis, okay? So what you need to know here, um, I'll simplify this really easily, but basically what happens is the way that your body is regulating thyroid hormone, it has three steps, okay? Two steps are in the brain, and that's the hypothalamus to the pituitary, and then those two things speak to your thyroid gland. Now, each of these three areas must be working properly in order for your thyroid function to be producing or in order for your thyroid to be producing enough thyroid hormone and in order for you to feel well. Now, most people focus only on the thyroid gland, right? They look at thyroid function. They say, you know, they ask the question, how much thyroid hormone is coming out of my thyroid gland? Well, that actually may not matter in every situation because if the communication between your brain and your thyroid gland is not there, if there's no communication, it doesn't matter how well that thyroid gland is functioning. The problem is up here. Okay. Now in the case of zinc deficiency, this causes problems with your hypothalamus or the production of TRH, all right? So it is a hormone that speaks to the pituitary, which then causes the pituitary to release TSH, which again is probably the one you know of, which is different from TRH, which then stimulates the thyroid gland. So in the setting of low zinc, your body has a hard time producing enough TRH to start the whole cascade. All right, then what happens is if you don't have enough zinc, you will see depressed levels of the TSH, right? Okay, you will see depressed T4 and T3. Now this is very important for thyroid patients because guess how doctors diagnose thyroid problems. Now, I, you know, we can get into the, the, top, the conversation of how effective is the TSH, and it isn't the best marker, first of all, of diagnosing the thyroid, uh, or thyroid conditions more generally, but it is the marker that most doctors are using when they test thyroid function. So when your doctor orders the TSH and they see that your TSH is low, they think to themselves, okay, this person has hyperthyroidism. If the TSH is high, they believe that you have hypothyroidism. But guess what happens with zinc? If zinc is low, it makes it look like you are hyperthyroid, even though you also have low T3 and low T4. This is why you must be getting these thyroid lab tests because you need to see the whole picture. But in the case of zinc deficiency, which is very common among thyroid patients, it causes a mixed picture. It causes low thyroid function because it causes a low TSH in concert with low T3 and low T4. So you must be paying attention to that. If you think that you, uh, and again, you, you're probably gonna have to talk to your doctor about this. So uh, just be aware that this can occur in the setting of zinc deficiency. The good news is if you replace your zinc levels, guess what happened? This problem gets solved or at least it improves, okay? So it's not the end of the world, but it can make your picture look a little bit funny, especially when you're looking in the traditional paradigm of low TSH is hyperthyroidism, high TSH is hypothyroidism, which doesn't work for everyone. So that was just number one. Number two is zinc is required for something called T4 to T3 conversion. A lot of people refer to this as peripheral thyroid conversion, and it is the process by which your body activates thyroid hormone. T4 by itself has some minor um, activity, we'll say, all right? So it does do some things inside of the body, but the majority of the work of thyroid hormone is done by T3. And the way your body creates T3 is predominantly through the conversion of T4 to T3. So it actually cuts off an iodine, cuts off one of its arms, and turns the T4 into a T3 mo molecule, and then that T3 goes inside of your cell and does all the things that, you're th that you want your thyroid to do. And in order for this process to occur, which is occurring all the time, in fact, about 80% of all the T3 that is in your body comes from this process. 20% is produced directly from the gland, but 80% comes from this conversion process. So you need to make sure that you are optimizing T4 to T3 conversion if you want high T3 levels. Not even high, if you just want regular and healthy T3 levels. So remember, zinc is required for T4 to T3 conversion. If you have low zinc, that process is not going to occur very well, which may lead you to experience low total T3 and low free T3, free T3 levels when you check your labs. Number three, zinc also plays a role in the T3 binding in the nuclear receptor, as well as binding of the receptor to DNA. So if you didn't already know, essentially what happens is this. The way thyroid hormone works is that it works inside of the nucleus of the cell, 
which is different, by the way, than a lot of uh, other uh, enzymes and proteins inside of your body. In fact, most things, they attach to the outside of the cell, and then they cause some event or change inside of the cell itself, and then that causes changes um, in proteins and, and the folding of things, and, and uh, channels may be opened, and so on. That's generally how things are working. Hormones work differently, especially thyroid hormone. It bypasses that membrane and goes directly to the cell and changes your DNA. It causes the transcription of certain genetic factors, proteins, enzymes, etc. That's how it's working, which by the way is also why it takes a little bit of time to work. So if you're doing something for your thyroid to try and fix it, well, guess what? It's gonna take several weeks um, for this change to occur. It just takes time for you to change your genetics you're just and the DNA that are, that's being produced. So zinc is required for this process to occur. Not only is it required to produce T3, it's also required for T3 to attach to the nuclear receptor inside of your cell. Now, I will tell you this, even though everybody sort of, well, I shouldn't say everybody, but most people, uh, researchers will say, research are, researchers are aware that zinc is required for this process to occur, but people don't know um, how much is impacting people clinically if they have zinc levels. Like nobody knows quite, quite, nobody knows very well how much this process is disrupted in the setting of zinc deficiency. It's likely that physiologically it does play a role and is probably playing a role in why people who have low zinc levels have low thyroid function. But we don't know that, for instance, it, this, this uh, zinc deficiency impacts this system more than it does thy thyroid conversion or even TRH production, right? We don't know how much it's playing a role, but we do know it is still important. That was number three. Number four is zinc deficiency by itself can cause hypothyroid symptoms. Now, it's not exactly clear um, by what mechanism this is occurring. It's probably through a combination of all the things I just mentioned previously, through its impact on TRH, through its impact on thyroid conversion, and through its impact, of course, on the, um, uh, the sensitivity of your cells to the T3 hormone. But we do know that zinc deficiency itself can lead to low thyroid symptoms. And some of those symptoms can be at least improved with zinc supplementation in the setting of deficiency. If you already have normal zinc levels, then taking extra zinc may not improve thyroid function, just so we're all on the same page here. But it is um, often helpful in the case of low zinc levels, which many thyroid patients suffer from. And then number five, we have zinc deficiency leads to suppression of T lymphocytes. Now you can read this as a, um, a disruption in immune function. The reason we care about this if, we, if you have a thyroid problem is because many thyroid conditions result are, are the result of Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is an autoimmune disease of the thyroid gland. So if you have anything which disrupts immune function, you may put yourself at increased risk for developing um, autoimmune disease of the thyroid gland, which then may trigger this whole process, okay? So that's, these are five main reasons why your thyroid needs zinc. Now here's what's even more interesting about this whole connection between zinc and your thyroid. It actually goes both ways. So I just explained why zinc is very important for thyroid function, but what you have to also realize is that low thyroid function leads to zinc deficiency, okay? So you can have sort of this chicken in the egg or, uh, negative downward spiral that can occur because what happens is uh, it's kind of hard to to ascertain which came first did you did your zinc deficiency cause your low thyroid or did your low thyroid cause your zinc and to some degree it doesn't actually matter because it still needs to be treated no matter what but i do want to explain sort of how low thyroid function can lead to zinc deficiency and that's for a couple reasons number one thyroid hormone is required for absorption of zinc inside of the gut. So in the case of low thyroid function, you're not going to be absorbing as much of the zinc that you get from the foods that you eat or the supplements that you take, which again is a big problem. So it all kind of comes back to uh, improving thyroid function. If you can improve thyroid function, you can increase how much zinc you are absorbing when you do take supplements and when you do consume it from your food. Um, and if you don't, then you're gonna have that cascade of problems that I mentioned previously. Number two is that in the case of low thyroid function, it alters how much zinc is excreted from your kidneys, okay? So what that means is this, you may be consuming enough zinc, you may be getting zinc inside of your body, but your kidneys may be causing you to pee more out than, than you want to, right, than your body actually needs. And this has to do with uh, how the thyroid is impacting the absorption and the retention of certain nutrients inside of the kidneys. By the way, this isn't the only one either. Um, in fact, your, uh, your thyroid itself can also impact the absorption and retention of magnesium in addition to zinc and even other nutrients as well. So in the case of low thyroid function, you may be peeing out more zinc, even though your body actually needs that zinc. And then number three, TSH influences cellular concentrations of iodine, zinc, and selenium. So there's something special about TSH itself, so thyroid simulating hormone, that actual hormone, which influences how much, uh, how much zinc is inside of your cells itself. This, by the way, is also one of the reasons why you don't just wanna suppress your TSH willy-nilly. 
Um, and a lot of people are out there where they say the TSH is not actually that important. It does play a role outside of just stimulating your thyroid gland. And this is one example of the roles that it can play inside of your cells. So what should you do if you're a thyroid patient listening to this? If you realize, oh my gosh, I really need zinc, or maybe I am zinc deficient. I haven't been paying attention to zinc. I'm not trying to eat foods that are high in zinc. So what should I do? I think I, I need more. Well, there's a couple things you can do. Um, two things, actually. Number one, I'd recommend that you try and get as much zinc as you can naturally through your diet. Okay. Now, foods that are high in zinc are probably not foods that you may be eating all the time. In fact, one of the best sources of, of zinc out there would be oysters. Um, they just contain massive amounts of zinc, but I, I personally don't eat a lot of oysters. I don't know a lot of people who eat a lot of oysters, but if you are somebody who eats a lot of oysters, then good for you because you probably have a good amount of zinc. If you don't like oysters, then you can also get zinc from beef, crab, pork chops, and even legumes. Although you should be careful if you are a thyroid patient consuming legumes because they can not only limit the absorption of zinc um, due to some chemicals that they contain themselves, they can also cause indigestion and some digestive problems uh, in patients who are already more susceptible to those if they have low thyroid function. Another way, perhaps more popular, uh, another popular way to get zinc would be through supplementation. Now, when it comes to zinc supplementation, there are many different forms of zinc that you can take, and I'll do a video that explains um, the various types of zinc that you can take and the various forms that you can take. But for uh, some rough information here, you will, you'll want to find a dose of zinc somewhere between the range of five milligrams and 15 milligrams um, each and every time you take zinc. Now, some people like to take more zinc than this. I would caution against that for, in just a, for a reason I'll mention in just a second. But we know that the body can't really absorb much more than about seven to 10 milligrams of zinc at any given time. Having said that, uh, there are many things which can inhibit the absorption of zinc. So sometimes you have to take more than that to make sure that your body's actually absorbing that seven to 10 milligram range. So as an example, maybe you need to take 15 to 20 milligrams of zinc because your body's only gonna absorb half of it, right? In that case, because of the reasons I mentioned previously having to do with how, the th how th low thyroid function inhibits uh, zinc absorption in the gut, or maybe you're taking it with certain chemicals which are limiting, limiting its absorption, it doesn't really matter why, but just know that sometimes it's hard to actually get all the zinc from the supplements you're taking into your body, in which case, some Sometimes taking a little bit of a higher dose is okay. Now, this is a double-edged sword though because zinc can cause a lot of indigestion and stomach problems. So you do need to be careful with that. Avoid taking the high doses of, high doses of zinc for that reason and stick to that five to, to 15 milligram range. I think that's more than enough for most thyroid patients, especially if they're also optimizing thyroid function um, as well simultaneously. I have supplements which contain this range of zinc and the right form of zinc, so you can look at those if you want. T3 Conversion Booster is the most popular of these, um, and it, it works very well. It has this range based off all the information I've been giving you here, including the right formulation of zinc. So if you're interested, look at that. If you don't want to use that, that's fine. Just make sure you're looking for it in the range that I mentioned here, that 5 to 15 milligram range, and in the right form, um, so that you can ensure that it's actually getting inside of your body. So these are five reasons why it's so important to, to take zinc if you have a thyroid problem or to at least make sure that your zinc levels are optimized if you have any sort of thyroid problem across the board. And by the way, you can tell from the information I mentioned previously that this is important for all patients, including people who don't have a thyroid. Because if you don't have a thyroid, well, guess what? You still need to make sure that your T4 is converted to T3. You still need to make sure that T3 is activating inside the cells itself. So this information applies broadly to pretty much every thyroid condition that I can think of. If you have any questions about zinc and why I make these recommendations, leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer those questions. Uh, and if you haven't already, make sure that you download my free thyroid PDF resources. I have tons of information all designed to help thyroid patients like you feel better. So you can check those out in the link below. And otherwise, that's all I have for you guys. So I'll see you in the next one.